Threads. I assume you've heard of it by now. The app is cool and all, but their website has this 3D particle logo thing that I absolutely had to try and recreate. A cup of coffee and a few hours later, and I built this. I'm relatively new to 3JS and React 3 Fiber myself, but I found it quite a bit easier than you might have expected to pull this together. Minus having to Google some basic math for placing items on a circle, I did not pay attention in school. If you wanna just grab the code, it's available for free on my website, hover.dev. While you're there, you can also find a bunch of pre-built interactions and animations for your React projects, primarily built with frame or motion. I just launched last week, so to celebrate, Pro Components are only $27 for the next couple of weeks for lifetime access to the library. I'm building out a bunch of components like these to help you learn and add some motion design sauce to your projects. So if that sounds good, link in the description. Anyways, let's build this thing. To go ahead and get started, just make sure that you have a boilerplated React project. I'm using Next.js. This will work just as fine with whatever other flavor of React you're using. And we're gonna need to install a couple of dependencies. So the main 3D library that we're going to be using is React 3 Fiber. If you go ahead and just Google React 3 Fiber, you're gonna find the same landing page that I'm looking at, but the packages that we're gonna need to install are three. If you're using TypeScript, you'll need to install the types and then React 3 Fiber. To go along with those, we can also add the React 3 Dre package. It's just at React 3 slash Dre. And this is essentially just a helper package for 3JS that gives us a bunch of super useful tools. The primary ones that we're gonna be using for this are like their orbit controls, which just gives us the basic controls of the camera without having to code that ourselves. Outside of this, I just have my blank screen here and my code over here on the left, and we can go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do on my empty component here is just add a position of relative. We're going to do this so that we can position some extra HTML elements on top of our canvas, uh, which will come a little bit later in this video. But if we just go ahead and add that, that's totally fine to start. After this, we can go ahead and import canvas from React 3 Fiber and then include that inside of our div in our component. This is going to be the primary canvas where React 3 Fiber is gonna be rendering all of our 3D materials. I'm using Tailwind CSS for this, so I'm gonna add a background using Tailwind CSS. This is the background color specifically that I just pulled directly off of the threads.net landing page, but you could use whatever you want. And then I'm also gonna set a height of 100 viewport height to this canvas. I haven't looked super deep into it, but I believe the canvas already sets some kind of height by default under the hood, which gets overridden if you're just using a class name. So I just went ahead and did an inline style. We should now see after we save that, that we have our black screen now that's coming from this background color. And from here, we can go ahead and actually get started. So the first couple of things that we're going to need are some kind of light source. There's a handful of different lights that you can use. I'm pulling these ones directly from the documentation from their example project. You don't actually need to import anything for these elements just because they're under the canvas element. It's going to understand what you actually mean to render here. We're not going to see any difference just yet because we don't actually have anything that we're rendering on the screen yet, but we can go ahead and fix that. Any type of objects in 3JS are going to have meshes and materials. So the mesh is going to be like the shape of the object and then the material is going to be how it looks. There's some that you can use just directly out of the box, but I want to use one called Sphere, which is just like a helper that comes from React 3 Dre. So I'm going to go ahead and import Sphere and then I'm gonna add that directly under our point light right here. Our sphere is gonna take a couple of arguments, namely position and this args object right here. The position is just gonna be your X, Y, Z position. So I'm just putting this first one at zero, zero, zero. And then our arguments here are going to be the scale and just kind of a basic unit. It's not like pixels, it's not feet, it's not inches, it's whatever you want. So I'm just saying one. And then the second two are going to be for the number of segments that you want your sphere to be. So in our case, I want a 10 by 10 sphere. If you put this down to something like two by two, click save, you're gonna see that you now have what looks more like a cube, which is not what we want. So just bump that back up to 10. I'm actually gonna want a bit of a smaller sphere when we actually get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my first argument here to 0.1 we should get something like this now. Inside of our sphere, we can now add our materials. These similar to our lights are going to come just directly from being in context of canvas. If you just type in the word mesh, you see, should see a whole bunch of different meshes auto-completed here. I'm just gonna use the mesh standard material. If I scroll down a little bit, mesh standard material. And this is gonna take a number of different attributes. The first one that we care about is just gonna be color. We'll just say something like purple. Now we should see that we have a purple sphere. I'll actually bump that back up a little bit in size again so we can see it. And now we'll see that we have this purple sphere in the middle with some kind of shading on it, which is coming from our light sources. If you take a look at the props that are on these materials, you'll notice that there are a couple of other options that you could pass in. The couple that I found looked kind of cool for this example are these emissive properties. So these are gonna create a light that actually comes from this material. In this case, I'm just making it the same color as the actual color. And then this roughness kind of makes it more or less shiny depending on how high or low this number is. So after we've added those, we should have something that looks like this. I wanna be able to pan around this circle that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a line above our lights right here and I'm gonna import 
orbit controls also from React 3 Dre. And if I save that, we should now be able to drag on our screen and zoom in and out and look all around our sphere that we just created. This is a good start. I'm gonna go ahead and take our sphere and I'm going to create a second sphere just so we can see what this looks like with two of these. And I'm going to put all these at position, let's say 1.5, 1.5. Now we should see that we have two spheres here, one right in the middle and then one that's a little bit off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and create a component specifically to hold our spheres down here, which I'm gonna call point circle. Inside of that, I'm going to return a group like this. And then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna take both of our spheres here, go like that, replace this with our point circle component. And then inside of our group, I'm going to drop both of our circles. This should remain looking exactly the same. And now one other thing that I wanna do before we get too deep into making our circle is just adding the rotation effect for this. So I wanna make this spin 360 degrees. And the way that we're going to do that is using the use frame hook, which comes from React 3.5 report that it's called use frame. And the way that we're going to use this is by first creating a ref using react use ref like this. We're gonna assign that to our group using ref equals ref. We can then define our use frame hook, which is going to pass in a callback function with this clock as one of the arguments. We can access the position and rotation of our object. So our group here using this ref.current.rotation. And I wanna spin this on the Z axis. So I'm gonna go ref.current.rotation.z. And I'm gonna set that equal to the clock's elapsed time. And I'm gonna set that time some small number so it goes pretty slow. If we save that, we should now see that we have this circle kind of slowly spinning. If we want to see what that looked like faster, we can go ahead and go like this. And now we should see that spins pretty quickly. I'm gonna go back to how we had it though, so 0.05. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to extract these spheres out into their own component. I'm gonna call that component point, and I want it to take in a position and a color. So the position is gonna be this, and then the color is going to be whatever this purple is. We'll keep the arguments the same for all of them. Inside of that, I'm gonna add another one of these spheres, pass in position, and then our arguments. Again, I'm making it a little bit smaller. And then inside of that, just this same mesh standard material, passing in the same color for both the emissive and the color properties. We can now come back up to our spheres and replace these with our new point component. This is going to take in a position. I'll make one just add zero, zero, zero. And then I'll add a couple of more, maybe at one, 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 and two, two, two. So now we should have just kind of like this spinning line of circles. We'll also need colors for the so again, I'll just go ahead and say color. Maybe we can go red this time. Sweet, so now we have our three spinning red circles like this. So this is a decent start, but obviously we don't just want three circles on the screen. We're probably gonna want a couple thousand of them and we're not gonna wanna have to go through and try and position all of these manually and figure out how to get that kind of gradient by coloring each point manually. That would be super annoying. So instead of doing that, I've gone ahead and created a utils.js file. And in here, we're going to generate a list of a couple of thousand of these points which are going to include our positions and our colors for all of our points. And then we can just map over them in this group and put them on the page. Over my utils file, I'm gonna start up at the top by defining a couple of constants up here. We'll explain a little bit about what these do. And as we go through, you'll probably get a little bit of a better grasp. I think it's just easier to do this now than to try and come back and forth. So up here at the top, I'm first going to define a minimum and a maximum radius. These are going to be the radius of both the inside and the outside of that kind of like donut looking thing I showed you at the beginning, as well as a depth. Now these numbers might seem kind of arbitrary, that's because the spacing or the sizing rather that I mentioned with 3JS is kind of arbitrary. This isn't like pixels. This is just units, just kind of generic units. So I'm saying I want the inner radius to be seven and a half kind of these generic units and the outer radius to be 15 of these units and the depth to be two units. We're gonna need to define a couple of colors for the gradient that we want. I'm leaving off the hash of these. You'll see why in a little bit, but these left and right colors are just pulled directly off of the threads landing page. And we're gonna use a little bit of JavaScript to actually determine based on how far across our circle our point is, uh, some kind of middle value. So all the way to the left will be one color, all the way to right will be another color, and then we'll calculate the middle colors in a little bit. Then finally, I just want to define the number of points that I want to create my circle. I'm starting mine with 2,500. There isn't a right or a wrong answer to this. It just depends, you know, kind of increase or decrease this number and you'll see what it looks like. But you should be able to bump this pretty high. Now that we have all of that defined, we can create our list to hold all of our points. I'm calling this points inner. You'll see why in a little bit. You can also just call it points, doesn't really matter. And what I want is to generate a list of num points points long, where the lowest number is like one all the way up to 2,500. The way that we can do that is using this array.from trick. There's a couple of different ways. It's just the way that I like. So this is gonna take array.from and the first argument is going to have a length of whatever the 
number of items you want, and then a callback function, which is just taking these arguments. If you actually hover over array.from, you'll see kind of what you can pass to this. But for our map function, this is going to give us the output that we're looking for. Now that we have our list of numbers, we can map over them and start generating our points. I'm gonna start just by defining all of the different variables that we're gonna need. I'll just start them as null, and then we'll come back and define them in a moment. So we're gonna need some kind of random radius. This is going to be between our minimum and maximum radius. We're gonna need some random angle to decide where to place this. We're also gonna need an X, Y, and Z position in space for where to place this. Some kind of color between our two left and right colors. And then finally, we can just return a couple of values here. So I'm adding in an index with just that number. This is why I wanted all these to be different so that whenever we map over this, we can add it to our key. We also are gonna need our position, our X, Y, Z position, and our color here. For a random radius, we're gonna to wanna to pick some random number between our minimum and maximum numbers. So some number between seven and a half and 15. I'm gonna add a helper function for this that I'm calling random from interval. This is gonna take in a minimum and maximum value. I'm not actually just pulling these directly and you'll see why in a little bit whenever we create our outer points list. But all that we're gonna do from this is return some random number. We can get that by doing math.random times max minus min and then adding back on min. And this is going to generate our random number between these two numbers. So now to actually call that, we'll just go back to our random radius and replace null with random from interval min radius max radius. For our random angle, we can get this by doing math.random times math.pi times two. If you don't remember some basic kind of trigonometry for how you would do something like this, don't worry, neither did I, I just Googled it. We can now define our X, Y, and Z positions. We can get our X position using math.cosine. We'll pass in our random angle that we just created and then multiply that by our random radius. Again, if I'm being entirely honest, I did not remember how to actually do this math for picking a random point on a circle like this, but Google it, figure it out. You can use sine and cosine, and this is what I came up with. For Y, we can do the exact same thing, but we're gonna use math.sine as opposed to cosine. And then for Z, we're going to also use the same random from interval function, but what we wanna do is have the minimum be negative depth that we defined up here and positive be positive depth, depth rather. So we can do something like this, random from interval, negative depth, and depth. So technically, even though we define this as two, the full depth is going to be four units. I'm gonna create a helper function for our color here, which is currently null, and I'm gonna call that calculate color. I want this to take in our X value, and then we can create our gradient based on that X value. So if it's all the way to the left, it'll be one value, all the way to the right, another value. First, I'm gonna pull our maximum possible difference. I'm calling this max diff, and that's just gonna be max radius times two. So essentially, I just wanna turn this into like a positive number instead of trying to calculate between negative 15 and positive 15. You can do it either way though. And then to get our actual distance, I'm just going to do whatever the X is plus this maximum radius. To actually get the ratio between these two, we could just do distance over our max difference. And this is going to give us our percentage from kind of 0% to 100% of how far across from left to right we are on our circle. And then we actually need to get our gradient stop, like where, what color we actually want to call this. Now I'm going to take absolutely no credit for this function that I have here. I'll paste it in and we can look at it a little bit. But if I'm being entirely honest with you, I just went ahead and pulled this off a of stack overflow. I'll add this same link in the description. All credit to whoever added that uh, answer in there. The idea though is that this is just going to take in our percentage kind of from that zero to 100%. And then it's going to go between our left color and our right color. And it's going to decide the hex code for wherever we are based on that percentage. So essentially, this is just going to calculate the gradient. So if we're halfway through uh, the circle from left to right, it'll be some number right between this left and right color. Go ahead and close that up now. And then we can just return our stop and then just make sure that we actually call it down here wherever we're doing this color. Click save. And now we can jump back over to our landing page. So I'm going to come and delete all of my points that I have here and add in, oops, our points inner. Make sure that we import that. We can now map over those numbers, dot map. That's going to give us a point, and then we can actually generate one of our point components that we've defined down here. First, anytime you're mapping over something in React, you're gonna have to give it a key. So I'm just using this points.index that I included. We can then also give it the position that we generated with point.position. And then finally, we'll just pass in our color with point.color. Click save, and we should now, once this saves, see that we have our circle now. I just realized that I'm actually using the colors from my personal example. So let me go ahead and change these to the colors from the website. Oh, Wait, I lied. No, we didn't. I'm just importing the wrong points here. Let me fix that. And there we go. Nice. Now we have our ring with our colors as we expected. <laughs> so one thing that we're going to notice whenever we refresh this just really quick is that first when it loads, we're going to be right in the middle. It doesn't look like we see anything. And then we have to zoom out before we actually see our colors here. We can fix this first by coming up to our canvas. I'm going to add a new line here. And this is going to take in a prop for camera. And we can just position our camera at some starting position. So I can save that. 
I'm gonna click refresh. And now we'll see that we start kind of in this cooler position. I just positioned mine so you get kind of part of these particles on the side and then you can kind of zoom around from there. I thought that looked cool, but you could totally also just start it from here or something. The one other thing that I'm gonna note really quick is that right now you can zoom way, way out and way, way in, which also might not be ideal. So we can also come on our orbit controls and give this a maximum and minimum distance. I'll just do 10 and 20. Click save. Now we actually should get kind of a block. So as I try and zoom out, can't zoom out anymore. As I try and zoom in, can't zoom in anymore. So now we're just right here where our points are. Now, one thing you will have noticed with the threads landing page is it wasn't just kind of like a perfect version of the logo. I'm obviously just using a circle here, but there's for their logo. They kind of had like these little extra points that were all over the place, just randomly spewed about. So the way that I'm gonna do that is just I'm gonna create a larger circle with less points. And I think it gives a pretty cool effect that looks pretty similar. So all that I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna come back over to our utils. I'm going to close our points inner here. Go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to create a second version that I'm going to call points outer. Points outer. We can then just adjust a couple of these numbers. So for our number of points, you can just do num point, say divided by four. For a random radius, we can just do the same thing. We'll go like this. Oops. Say divided by two. Maybe for max radius, actually, we want to go larger. So we'll say times two. This way it goes further out. Oops. These can stay the same, but I do want to add some more depth. So I'm actually going to come in, I'm going to say, say times 10, something like that. Color can stay the same. Everything else should be able to stay the same. Come back over to our landing page here, and I'm going to come down to wherever we're mapping over our points. Enter. We'll copy all of that. Come back up to the top and make sure we're importing this from the right place this time. Points outer. Oops. Points outer. There we go. We can then drop that in for this second map here. Click save. And we now should see that we get a whole bunch more points just kind of randomly, or at least more randomly. It's still technically calculating in a circle, but further out into space. We can then top all of this off by coming back up to where our canvas is and adding a little bit more HTML on top of this. I'm just gonna add an H1. I'm using a little bit of Tailwind CSS to then place this in the middle of the screen like this, giving it some font weight uh, and some color, making it big removing any pointer events. So whenever you go like this to actually kind of zoom around, you're not accidentally selecting the text. And now we should have some text in the middle of the screen, similar to the threads landing page, at least how it was whenever I built this. I'm sure they're updating it every 10 minutes right now. And that is pretty much going to be it. If you, again, want this code, I have a version of this on my new website, hover.dev. Check that out. It should be free on there. Other than that, if you enjoyed this and learned anything, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Peace.